sing you the song of my people, a depressing little song I wrote. To the tune of a, a, a tune written by the Punch Brothers, I think. And then I'll draw a picture and tell you a story. I have here a pen and some paper in my hand, in my hand. Ideas come and go like a vapor, just like sand in my hand. Will anything ever stick to the wall? just want to catch my stride But if I stumble and fall down again I think I might stay here on the ground I sit here just procrastinating all day long, all day long. Why am I so frustrating? All day long, all day long. Will anything ever stick to the wall? I just want to catch my stride. But if I stumble and fall down again, I think I might stay here on the ground. All right, so here's a little background for this story, which I'm illustrating for you. It's an old story. Like any good tale, it's been passed down from generation to generation. When I was just a kid, probably too young to hear it, my dad told it to me while he was showing me how to change the oil on the Volvo. I popped the drain plug out of the pan and the oil poured out like a motionless, glistening rod. My dad heard it from his father on the far side of a lake in the middle of a fruitless moose hunt. And he, my dad's dad, Heard it from a guy at the laundromat who wouldn't leave him alone while he was folding. The laundromat guy's name was Samuel L. L. Coolridge, but his friends just, his friends just called him Coolridge. Now, at some point in between Coolridge learning this story from a Mavis Beacon typing exercise and the advent of the spoken word a long, long time ago, the events of this story transpired. Events which even years or millennia later, are yet completely unrefuted and are the basis for many of our current day systems of government and methods of both hand-to-hand -hand combat and therapeutic massage. Even when we look at the way most of our legal proceedings are structured or how the first humans circumnavigated the globe using hot air balloons tied to the backs of dolphins and orca whales, or if you look down at the stitching hidden neatly in the seams of your shirt and your socks, all of this plainly ties back to such a foundational tale as this. A riveting tale. A raunchy tale. A drama of sick twisting hairpin turns down the plummeting mountainside of fate into the murky, faded, slow-churning river valley of destiny, where we find ourselves neck and knee-deep as we're head over heels in something we've heard a thousand times before, but we're frozen motionless as we wait and watch as it's about to happen again. Now, I will take a moment to address the critics and the naysayers who have the nerve to suggest that some elements of this story may have been fabricated or embellished over the years. It has 
not. When you hear this story, and as you can see in the drawing now, changing even one minuscule element of this story would affect it dramatically, ultimately transforming it into something completely different. I hope I don't have to point out to anyone that it isn't, in fact, different. It is 100% itself, and nothing else. Anyways, to get into the grand and immaculate story itself, I will just preface it briefly by saying that there, that there are some elements of violence here, also some tasteful nudity, and a short epic battle sequence. Culturally, at the time, the people were war-weary. A series of long and unjustified campaigns and crusades had worn their souls down to a nub. They just wanted a minute to catch their breath. They wanted to spend a little time on themselves, watching TV or planting a vegetable garden. Unfortunately, they had a wild and violent tyrant for a king who would have no such siestas on the schedule, not until the whole world was under his grubby thumb. This cruel emperor was called King the III, and he always got his way. That is, until one fateful day, someone stood up to him. A day foretold in the ancient texts. This brave being was known only as Saint Sir Mr. Esquire, and King Heximilimich was not pleased, bellowing at him the words, Thou art done for, and I slay thee, in quick succession, to which Sir Mister responded with a resonating little no, and died. And that's how the story goes. <laughs> 